Welcome to Dangerous Prototypes. I'm Ian. India, a country of more than a billion people. It's also one of our biggest markets for the bus pirate and other open hardware tools. We want to meet our fellow geeks and see the electronics markets that are virtually unknown to the rest of the world. Our first stop is Mumbai, formerly known as Bombay. We met up with locals in Newell, Murli, and Yagnesh who showed us around. We met up at the picturesque Mumbai Bay before jumping into a taxi to the first electronics market. Today we're going to visit Manish Market and Lamington Road. Which if there's one thing you can't avoid in Mumbai, it's the traffic. So being the brilliant crew we are, we tried to shoot all of our interviews in taxis in the middle of midday traffic. Uh, at Manish Market it's mostly consumer goods, mostly Chinese phones, uh, phone uh, LCD modules that go into phones and more of uh, earphones and accessories and stuff like that, mostly consumer stuff. Lamington Road is, most of, most, um, is more like a parts market. You can find uh, SMD chips uh, through whole parts, but mostly chips uh, that are commonly used in the industry here, like mostly all at megas probably, uh, common picks like Pick 18F series probably. And Manish yes. Market, can you tell us a Manish little bit about that? Manish Market is uh, gained prominence uh, when India had a very closed uh, import policy. You couldn't get a lot of consumer goods. And Manish Market was a place where you could go and get the latest VCR player or the latest tape deck and stuff like that. We jump out of the taxi at Manish Market and Yagnesh takes the lead. He's got this place figured out and uses it to source all the parts for his projects. This is uh, actually a mobile spare part uh, market. All kind of mobile spare parts, for example, iPhone, LCDs, they are, very, they are not original, they are very cheap. So you can use them in your project if you are low on your budget. Generally, this market has everything. Every, you name any mobile spare parts and it will have it. There will be lots of small shops like this one, as you see here, will be there. And they will sell you varieties of parts, arranging from your mobile cell phone key, keypad IC to your uh, base bed, uh, processor control board or things like that. So, so LCD check kar rahe ho aap. Okay. So he is checking the LCDs uh, uh, that he imports from China. They just carry all kinds of touch screens. This is a touch screen shop we've come to. What's really cool is he actually has the part numbers and the connectors and examples up on the wall. And that's something we never see anywhere else, especially in Huachong Bay. In China you can get huge numbers of touch screens and all sorts of uh, LCDs, but you never know the part number and you can never actually you know, figure out how to use them. And data sheets are available, he says. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to buy a touch screen, sort of a random one. I'm not quite sure what we're going to do with it. We'll probably give it to Shock. But uh, it's 40 rupees, which is, they say it's a dollar, but uh, in my experience, 40 rupees is slightly less than a dollar. It's about 55 rupees to a dollar. I just bought uh, five pieces of uh, micro, mid-mount micro USB connectors. I needed that in the project. Okay. So yeah, I got it for like 12 bucks a piece. Uh, that's like a great deal, I think. You know, uh, on Mauser, I think it's like a dollar. Yeah. And this was really a steal. Yeah, I got five at that price. So. If you are doing any project, uh, open source project or anything, personal project like that, it makes sense, at least in India, to use as many as mobile parts available in your project so that you can come around here and uh, buy it from here. So you don't have to uh, order anything from RS, Element 14 or Fernal or anything like that. You can just come over here and buy as many as stuff uh, as possible. For example, joysticks uh, and batteries, battery connectors and all. We'll cut my eye over here, so they're actually repairing a hot air rework station, which is really cool. He's got it opened up and he's tinkering around with it. It's the same, a tin, Iowa, Quick, whatever. There's a million brands that come out from, I'm assuming the same factory in China. They all look the same. They all have a 900 or 800 part number. It's always a similar. But I've never actually seen someone repair one, so that's very good, very cool. <laughs> I'm suitably impressed by Managed Market, and the idea of designing what you build around the parts that are available here, is what everybody does. You design around the parts you have on hand, but having this resource here to get service mount parts and stuff, that's amazing. And like always, I'd love to have this near my house. Good job. People are offering little services, like copying SD cards. 
Here people have all been very welcoming, very interested in what we're doing and very nice to us. There's people everywhere, there's stuff going on, there's repairing going on everywhere. Uh, while we're filming, people keep gathering around us to look at the camera from behind and also peeking their heads over our shoulders and, and between us. Outer side, they try to dupe, dupe you also, like they'll say it's a 32 GB card and it would be only a 1 GB card or something like that. But uh, the firmware would be changed a bit so that when you plug in to check right click and properties it will show 32 GB but when you actually store data it won't be 32 GB. I hope so we can find one of those. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah you can you can surely do it. We found a video game stand and they've got what seems to be well will you tell Nintendo, us a little bit about it? <laughs> old Nintendo console games like SNES or NES type of a game. Uh, they are basically the same game but in a different form factor I guess uh, the, they have a different cartridge type of a thing that you plug into a game game you know console kind of a thing with controllers and all. Yeah. And what, what system is it? What kind of system is I it? I think it's a SNES yeah. Yeah, or something like that. It's, it has a it's an old uh, you know clone of uh, old uh, gaming console. 8-bit games, you can play all kinds of 8-bit games. Yeah. There's a cartridges with uh, 999 games and you know 1000 games and okay, stuff. So it's actually a Super NES clone? Yes. Okay, by mm -hmm. a different manufacturer in a different yeah, packaging. Yeah. Okay, and the games, their official Nintendo games are also clones? I, yeah, they're also clones. None, none of this is supported by, you know, produced yeah. by Nintendo. Yeah. And it's all, it's all currently produced? Yeah, yeah. There's a market cool. for that, yeah. For Mario Brothers on here? Oh, yeah, and that one too, with the yeah, bigger picture. Yeah, it has lots of games in it, you know. Okay, and there's, yeah, seven in this one and twelve yeah. in this one. We stopped at a stand where a kid is selling SD cards and flash disks. So they're trying to find the cheapest, most likely counterfeit one so we can take it home and check it out. So they're they're going to bring the fake ones for us. He said yeah. these aren't the fake ones, but they're yeah. going to run off and get some somewhere. Yeah. So we have one to play with in the workshop. Yeah. There's a grape vine that runs around here. So if you want something, just tell him he'll run around. Yeah. And here it's arrived. So here's my 32 gig flash drive that cost me two US, two US dollars, just 100 rupees. So most likely fake. We're going to take it to the workshop and check it out. So this is kind of cool. There are a whole row of guys. They're just sitting at little tiny stands repairing cell phones. We didn't see this many anywhere else, but there's at least four of them up here. It's very cool. We've got all sorts of misspelled, slightly off brands. Here's a Samsung, a Suvsum. And down here, here's a Sum Samk. Sui? <laughs> And a real are also counterfeit. Yeah. So this is not always original Samsung. Although it is spelled correctly, but still that's not the original. On the iPhone too, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I was really impressed. If I lived here, I think I would run down there because it seems so quick and easy. I think I should too because this is the first time I've been here and I'm totally amazed. And I like what Ragnesh said, that you come here and pick what you get and then design your product around it. Next, we head across town to Lamington Road, the big parts market. You can buy one resistor here, or a reel. Everybody gets their parts here, from students to big manufacturers. We made it to Lamington Road, which is the wholesaler and distributor market in Mumbai. Uh, we just stepped into the oldest street where evidently a lot of India's big name shops got their start. Here outside we've got walls with parts and stuff in it. I'm going to show you this giant seventh segment display up here. I love those. It's not a Global Geek Tour without an LED stand. Here's one in Mumbai. They've got reels and signs, big signs, so I do some custom work too. It's typical, you expect it everywhere. It wouldn't be a market without it. Yeah, there's all kinds of connectors, heat shrink sleeves, all kinds of, uh, you know, anything to do with connectors and uh, rubber cables and stuff like that, that's available here. So I just bought uh, 10 meters of 5mm heat shrink uh, tubing, that's about a dollar, 50 rupees. So what I have here is uh, our ala mode board. It's uh, an Arduino for the Raspberry Pi. At the bottom here is the uh, Raspberry Pi. At the top here is uh, the Arduino. That's the standard Atmega uh, chip. Uh, Arduino headers. Uh, we have servo headers here. Uh, we can plug in a GPS module. We can put in a SD card for storage. It, it connects to the Raspberry Pi via the GPIO and talks either serial or uh, I2C or SPI, all three. And you're having this made? This is going in production now? Yes, uh, Seed Studio is making this for us. Uh, we pre-sold a hundred of these on our website already. And the next lot will be from uh, Maker Shed sometime next week. So we demoed this at Maker Fair uh, and at uh, Open Hardware Summit, both the places. So we're pretty excited about this uh, whole board. There are two shops around here where you will get all kinds of motors. Yep. 
and this is one of them called Bombay Electronics and here as you say like uh, you get any type of motors and most of the motors are salvaged from printers or uh, cameras or yeah. digital heads so but uh, second hand. they are more second hand some of them are uh, new ones and imported ones also but you get uh, any kind of those motors generally people in students in Mumbai come here to buy motors for their robotics projects and stuff like that so this stand sells motors separate motors and gears mostly salvaged from printers and stuff yeah uh, what one are you looking at here yeah this is one uh, a motor with a gear a gear head fitted and it has a rotatory encoder uh, feedback so we found uh, the atmega 328 that's that's the same chip that's on the yeah. Arduino. Yeah. So the, yeah, yeah, there's five. quoting five bucks for uh, each IC. Right. You know, if, if you're uh, running for a quick prototype, you can just simply hop in and get the chip and yeah. you have your prototype ready in like, yeah, yeah in like a day. Yeah. But uh, if, if you order from uh, some Mauser or Digikey, it takes like uh, 15 days or something yeah. to ship to India. Yeah. So this is the way to go. <laughs> Merle's taking us somewhere that has a bunch of different switches. A glass display case on the wall has all sorts of different switches that you can choose from and browse. Uh, Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, I come here, if I need any kind of switches, this is the place I come. You can find any and every type of switch you can imagine, you know, uh, from small tactile SMD push buttons to whatever joysticks or that small joystick analog switch. So I couldn't help myself but to stop here and get shock a few joystick buttons. Buttons are some of his favorites right next to LCDs. I want to take a second to point out that we found solar panels along the street. This happened in Akihabara in Japan as well. There's nothing cooler than walking down the street and seeing solar panels out there. These are 12 volts, 20 watts, and they cost about $30 US. This shop has a great selection of stepper motors, but what I thought was cool was not only do they have motors, they have the control switches that tell a motor when it's reached the end of a rail or bar or whatever. So they've got these little motor stopper switches. A very minute motor, motors, if you see over here, uh, this all, they are all extracted from cameras and your cell phone vibrator motors and so, but they are generally from the kind of dump, um, dump grounds where you dump printers and yeah, yeah. Uh, stuff like that and then uh, they have some people who are extracting always motors and stuff yeah. like that. Okay, so if they're pulled parts, are you able to get more than yeah, one? Yeah, you are generally, they do have a stock of them. You, if you are going to need 20 or 10 of them, yeah, they are reliable. Okay, uh, Murli just called and he's quite excited about something. So we'll probably go there first. This is a remote place. You can find all kinds of remote controls here for VCDs, for TVs, for uh, air conditioning equipment, whatever you can think of that has remotes. Perfect. Those remotes are here. At the end of the road, we found this tunnel. It's full of tools and electronic stuff. I've never seen anything like this before. Thought it was worth stopping and pointing out. We only made it to Mumbai because of a scheduling conflict in Bangalore, but I'm really glad we did. We saw some of the best markets we've ever seen and had an incredible time. Join me next time in Bangalore. I'll meet up with 20 geeks in a trademark-free cartoon mystery solving bus. We'll visit factories, markets, and open hardware shops. Thanks for watching.